So heading out into the desert of South Central Idaho to a place that I haven't been to in, boy, 10 or 12 years. Um, but I thought to myself, it's got a pretty interesting geologic story, a little bit of a riddle, um, and it's pretty neat. Unfortunately, uh, the local riffraff has somewhat trashed it out, and you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get there here in a second. Uh, right now we're driving the road into this location. This is called Clay Cave um, here in Jerome County. It's not a big secret, but it is a bit of a journey to get to. Um, you can see the road is pretty rough. Um, and this is when it's dry. But we'll head out here. I'll take you down into the cave and present this little riddle to you, show you some features in the cave. But the cave has one specific geologic feature that makes it somewhat exceptional um, and worthy of some consideration. So join me on this little adventure. Thanks for coming along. Geology professor Sean Wilsey here. Almost here, out to Clay Cave. So we are at the entrance to Clay Cave. Let's go ahead and drop in here. And immediately you can see some of the graffiti, uh, kind of unfortunate. But let's get in a little further in this lava tube system and see what the big fuss is about here. Hopefully we'll be able to see some nice lava tube features as well. Um, this lava tube is in um, let me get another light on here. Hopefully make it a little easier to see. Is in a, a lava flow that's about 95,000 years old uh, from a vent called Rocky Butte about 10, 11 miles away from this location. And just like all lava tubes, lava tubes are good, efficient conduits for transporting lava downhill once the surface of the flow is insulated uh, it can transport the lava a good distance away a um, little bit of water in here so there's still some water seeping in from above from some of the rainy weather we've had recently so uh, i'm going to take us in a little bit further and then we should be able to see uh, a good example of what exactly it is we're looking for here. Okay, so this is the part of the clay caves I wanted to bring you to. So we can see that the ceiling of the cave is this classic uh, dome shape, very typical of lava tubes. This one's quite a bit wider than what I see at other lava tubes. I would guess this thing is maybe a good 25 feet, maybe like eight, nine meters across. But what we really wanna focus on here is not the rock excel, excel, it, it, itself, but it's the floor of this cave. So living very much up to its um, namesake, the floor of the cave is just totally made out of this fine clay-like material. It's actually not perfectly clay-like. It feels a little grittier than that to me, maybe more silt, maybe even a little bit of fine sand uh, mixed in there as well. But the floor of the cave is entirely filled in with clay. And so the riddle here, the mystery, is where did all this clay come from? Now we're too far in from the entrance for wind to have blown it in, although wind would be um, a likely process that could transport uh, fine grained material like this. So the question remains, where, where would all this clay come from? And presumably it's quite thick. I mean, I, don't, I haven't dug it out here, but you can see how it's filling in the floor of the cave to some level here. Uh, hopefully, I'm hoping the light is getting, getting all the details in here. Let me try different light source. Yeah, let's go back to the flashlight. I think that was as good as anything. Um, it's kind of so big in here, I think it's hard to capture. But the idea here is you can see the floor of the cave. It's completely flat, 
horizontal through here, uh, and then the walls of the cave coming up, arching over, uh, and coming down. Um, so what would have carried into this lava tube system so much clay? And I think if you take a good look at, uh, on the video description, uh, of the location here. If you look at this location, the GPS location of clay caves on Google Earth or something like that, and also if you've looked at a few of my recent videos, you might be able to put together the answer. Um, so most lava tubes like this should have a, a very rocky floor, um, places where maybe the ceiling of the cave has fractured, or at a minimum, what we should have on the floor of this tube is the lava channel itself. Once the lava starts draining out of the cave um, or draining down, losing volume, we should have a, a rocky basaltic floor. And instead, we have this clay, this kind of tan colored clay um, that just covers the entire surface here. And I don't know if I've actually, remember how far I went back in this thing last time. We have a good example up here, aside from all the graffiti, of a section that's caved in. Uh, and what we can see here, get you a little bit closer, is some of the rock strewn around on the floor of the cave um, from rock fall from above. And so the cave is, the ceiling has collapsed down. And this has all happened since the clay was deposited. So it's sitting on top of the clay and therefore represents uh, an event that happened after the, the clay was deposited. But these lava tubes are prone to collapse. You can see some of the, the big fractures uh, even just right above me, a little unnerving. You just kind of hope it's not the day for it to collapse. <laughs> um, but some of the rocks up here uh, just above me. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit further, but let's go ahead and do a big reveal then on how this clay would have come into uh, this cave system. So again, hopefully you've taken a second to look at this place on Google Earth. Uh, look at this from, in terms of where it sits in the Snake River Plain. And what you'll see is that Clay Caves sits right along the path of the Bonneville Flood, of the Eden Channel in the Bonneville Flood. And so the idea is that it was when the Bonneville Flood occurred, this area would have been uh, inundated with water and the water would have poured down into the cave, into the lava tube. Um, that water would have been uh, completely laden with sediment, with um, sand, silt, and clay, and it would have completely poured down the entrance of the cave, down into the cave system, and as that water came to rest, it would have deposited uh, and settled out all this sediment in here. Um, pretty fantastic when you think about it. And again, that's something I've just never uh, seen before, having been in quite a few lava tubes in a lot of different places. It's certainly one of the more unique ones here uh, in Southern Idaho. So, um, not sure how well this is all showing up on video, but hopefully if nothing else, it's been a decently narrated story. It's such a big cave. Um, in terms of the size, I think it's really hard to get all the details in here. I guess I need to stand a little bit closer. I do have a good flashlight, um, but it's probably just a little hard to get it all in. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. I come over to the corner of the cave. Um, but yeah, Clay Cave in southwestern I in south, south central Idaho. Um, an interesting cave because of the extensive deposition of clay along the floor of the cave. And um, my interpretation is that this was all filled in with 
uh, sediment-laden waters during the Bonneville flood because it sits right in the path of the Eden Channel. And so that water uh, settled out a tremendous amount of sediment in the lava tube covering the basalt floor. And voila, you end up with this uh, pretty interesting and extensive lava tube system with the clay on the bottom. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this little adventure into uh, the underground of Idaho. Thanks again for uh, your time. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you uh, want to make a donation, there's a donate button on the banner of the page and a thanks button under the viewer and also a PayPal link under the video description. So I'll give you my spooky face. Thanks for joining me again. Sean Wilsey here in South Central Idaho in Clay Caves. <laughs>